So, I really was hoping against hope I would have something really cool to say for the first, like, canon episode of Carrying Crown, something really creepy. I could quote Cradle of Filth lyrics, I suppose. The moon she hangs like a cruel portrait. Now we're not going to do that. Anyway, I've had a lot of coffee today, if you can't tell. And it's time for our first character prologue in Carrion Crown. We got six players. We're going to do them in groups of two over the next three weeks before we, you know... TPK the party to stuff you shouldn't fight at level one, but that's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I should apparently do Darkest Dungeon. I've never played Darkest Dungeon. I don't have any Darkest Dungeon Good quotes. game. But this game is dark, and it will have dungeons in it, and it's also going to have a damn fear with a, a really gross infection on his hand, is what we determined a carbuncle was before we started. <laughs> Technically, his name is Matthew. His name here, if you watch Doomsday Dawn, of course, is Chewy, and he is... He is partially first because we we decided we were going to play Carrion Crown in like book two of Doomsday Dawn and Chewie was one of the first characters I got. So I've had this like, I remember it was like October and I'm on vacation in St. Louis and here comes this character and like, I'm going to brew so much cool stuff. Beginning of April, here we are. Chewie, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. good glad to be here. I'm glad you're here too, man. I will, uh, mm, I guess we'll basically, because we already know what you're playing. You're playing a special class native to a comic book which i'm surprised is an actual paizo class i figured it would be third party yeah paizo's real good in the old day having stuff like that like you remember john carter you remember that movie yeah the green men of barsoom are also a playable race at like 28 rp or something but they're oh. there they exact pretty sure that was the forerunner of the kasafa but that's not what we're here to talk about. If you would, I guess just, if you'd reintroduce your character, who you are, what you are, why you're out running around, things like that, we'll dive in. All right. I am Edgar Xavier Dampier Nosferatu born. And yeah, I'm a vampire hunter is my class. And... I'm just trying. I'm trying to find my father as my main goal to get as many answers out of him as possible, and if need be, put him down. If it turns out the reason why, with what happened to my mother, was something evil, to put him down because of that. So I'm off, trying to fight as many undead as possible. Fair enough. Lofty goals indeed for a level one character. It's one of those backstories. What do you do? I fight vampires. Well, I guess vampire is a template. You could fight like a CR one half thing with a vampire on it. In any case, your training now complete. You have been basically set loose upon the world. Ustalov is a like it's a very target rich environment for somebody who wants to go fighting any kind of scary thing. Certainly at this point in time, like you would not be able to toe up with a vampire or no. much more than like 1d4 plus one zombies. But those become your practice as you begin like moving around Ustalov, trying to figure things out, learn where like vampire sightings and things might take place. It's a slow process for you. And that's partially because given the nature of your some would call it a heritage, some would call it a curse, some would call it something in between. Everything hurts. The thing about the Nosferatu is the Nosferatu vampire is not the like the pretty sparkly kind. No, no, no. no. Nosferatu are the old ones, the ones that are cursed to just kind of continue aging so they, they're not like pretty immortal they're just you can't die immortal so even at how old is xavier again he is 53 at 53 which is like that's a relatively young age for danfier because like the aging process is slow xavier can specifically remember the day he fell as a child and broke his wrist and it never healed quite all the way because it just can't your early 20s when the arthritis set in cataracts not long after that everything is kind of just a living waking pain traveling across across ustalov you eventually begin to hear word near ustalov's city of caliphus 
rumors of people disappearing in the night, rumors of swarms of vermin being spotted in mass in the area, and you would know, of course, that Nosferatu don't turn into mist when, like, they want to escape a place. They can only turn into, like, swarms of rats or discorporate into thousands of centipedes that go a-crawling on. And this is a sure sign of, well, the presence of a Nosferatu. Outside Caliphus, there's a lot of little, like, farming villages. Basically, they don't really have names so much as they're kind of... I'm going to say they didn't have names and then be like, yeah, it's like Rorikstead. But that's the idea. Like, two or three or four houses that are yeah. just kind of circled around the well and village it has become. Rumors have led you here. And that is where I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. All right, so you said there's like four houses? Mm, maybe closer to like a dozen. Four is a kind of very small number, but you get the idea. All right, I have a question if there's two buildings in particular. Is there a, um, a funeral home and is there a church? There's definitely not a funeral home. The place is a little too small for a funeral home and normally the practice in this part of the world in the smaller cities is to like not bury your dead but to burn them and to say like blessings to Phrasma over top of the funeral lest they like return in on life as a ghost or something like that in the case of like particularly like important people dying or particularly heinous murders a priest might make his way down from the city but no funeral home because well the funeral home is the pyre so far as the yeah. church goes there is a there are a couple of little shrines in the region. There's a barn with like a rascal's holy symbol hanging over it. Most people have Phrasma's holy symbol or the symbol of like Saren Ray or Yomade or something that's very anti undead or anti like Tarbophon. Yeah. Somewhere in their house to try to ward off evil. Okay. Um I would like to start my investigation by um by looking for anyone on the streets if I can't find anyone knocking on doors. Okay. So it's not uncommon for people to go inside when you show up. You have the ability to disguise yourself at times, but, like, the pale skin, the super long fingernails that don't stop growing, the ears that are pointing, not from elf heritage, but from, like, the cartilage wearing out, it's unsettling. They, of course, recognize the difference between a damn fear and a, like, a full-blooded vampire. Nevertheless, like, as you go to knock on doors, nobody comes out occasionally. Just, go away! We don't need your kind here! I take a deep breath in. I'm here to help. I say I'm the person who told me to go away. I want to find the who's taking your people. I'm particularly good at killing undead. Takes one, takes someone of my kind to know how to kill one. Good. So there's a a little like slat in the door that is pulled aside, not unlike uh, the village of Bree, where the guy looks out through the gate. It's that kind of concept. Pulls open. Here comes this old man staring at you. Well, I suppose you look the type. All right, fine. Come on in. And there's a. It probably takes him 30 seconds, as aged as this human is, to get all the locks and chains and everything. It was the series of mechanical clicks as a bajillion different locks are undone on this really, like, thick wooden door. Swinging open the door, he stands leaning on a cane, just... Well? Well, how many people has gone missing, and where have they most, like... Where have they all been around? Is it outside, in their houses? What's been going on? If we do that, we take care of it ourselves, wouldn't we, Sonny? We wake up one day and they're gone. Nothing more than a handful of spiders running around the town. Hmm. Any... Any types of large vermin? I mean, yeah. not large vermin, but 
large groups of vermin. I just said that, sonny. Spiders and rats and centipedes and bats and all kinds of terrifyingness. It's most likely a Nosferatu, then. Is the type of vampire. That's as near as we'd figured it, yeah. Short of it being some kind of plague of rats or bats or something. Which direction do they go? Anybody see? Yeah, usually they take off towards Caliphus. And the people that he, that are taken, are they important people in your all's little village here, or are they just farmers? Well, we're all farmers, mostly. Usually it's just our women. All right, um, do you all, so, you all probably have this, but you all have garlic growing? There is garlic actively hanging over the door. It's, Danfier don't have a weakness to it, but it, I guess the best way to say it is, Edgar probably doesn't like spaghetti very much. Like, from the bloodline, it tastes foul to you. There's bits of silver are kind of all over the place. It's not uncommon for the cutlery in places like this that are a little farther afield to like literally be made of silver. Yeah. I'd use the garlic to help protect yourself. And is there any witnesses to the kidnappings? Any of them? Not really. We set guards sometimes and they just wind up dead. Which house is the most Where's the house of the person who was most recently taken? The old man leans around your like shoulder to point out the front door. Over that way! Across the way there! Who lives there? No one now! Used to be. Fine little family come down from Caliphus, start a farm. Newly wedded husband and wife. Do I have permission to enter their house? You're a vampire, oh. aren't you? Permission from their to village. Edit. Only, I'm not a vampire, as I, like, take one of the garlic cloves and I eat it. Okay, it's disgusting. It's, like, you bite down, I, I have to imagine eating just a clove of garlic by I've itself. I've done it before in real life. Is it gross? It's super strong. No, it's fair not enough. It's super strong. Makes sense? Okay. <laughs> so, for you, it's probably, like, incredibly overpowering. Also... What hand is our little friend in? Um, he can manifest on e- on either hand. Okay, so he can he can bounce from one to the other. Yeah. Is he on the hand that picks up the garlic? Uh, me, the wall players wanting to say yes, but me, the camp players wanting to say no. Okay, it sounds like I need to break out my percentage dice then. Yeah. I'm rolling these where people can't. Well. YouTube and Twitch can keep us honest. Here we go, camera. We're going on a journey together. Wee! <laughs> All right, white dice is the tens place. 24. You see, there's a two. That's a glare from the sun, but is a four. Okay, so there's a muffled, and muffled because you know to like reset your webcam when you take it on a magical adventure is what you do. There's a, a <laughs> <laughs> you know to clench your fist when the little thing starts talking, but you realize a little too late that your carbuncle had manifested on that hand, and you pick up the garlic, and it's just kind of face first without basking into this thing. The old man, as you do this, okay, fine, you're not a vampire, but did you just pass gas or something? What was that noise? You must really not like garlic. Oh. It's not my most particular favorite food, but I can stomach it. It sounds like you can't stomach it. Mm-mm. I I shall be going now. Oh, good, good. You do that. Take it on my <laughs> garlic. What are you going to do when a vampire's come? I can't protect myself. And as you turn around, in the town, she was not there before, but it appears she's made her way in. Like, as you have had this conversation with this old gentleman here. She is... I will never, ever assume, like, the sexual orientation of any of my characters, 
but like she's unquestionably just like beautiful she carries a scimitar which Uh is out and drawn and there's like a as the sun is kind of going down there's light coming from it her shield bears Saren Ray's holy symbol her blonde hair falls shoulder length as she looks over and sees you you can feel her eyes on you so powerful is her stare these just like bright blue eyes Uh, she sees you and there's kind of like a stutter at first like or more like a double take I guess she sees you hmm? goes to like clench her sword a little tighter you there I turn and you hear a cracking of my joints in my neck when I turn to face her as in like anime guy getting down to business or as in ow like old man arthritis yeah fair enough okay so you turn you see the woman she sees you you're and come here she says do you speak celestial i do not she says something in celestial and her sword begins glowing of pale bluish yellowish kind of color she holds the like the flat end of it like she Roroni Kenshin she whoop because the scimitar is just bladed on the one end the other end of the scimitar up to you you don't look to be everything you you're not human are you no but I'm here to... I've had rumors of a vampire here and I've come to take care of it. I assume that is why you are here. It is what my order does. As she's talking, the flat end of the scimitar is getting closer and closer to you. As that happened, the hairs on your body, like, stand up around it. Uh, this would hurt you, wouldn't it? A blade going through anyone would hurt it. No, it's not a blade... I'll take that as a yes. And she kind of like moves a little closer to like what little hair you have on your body to like run up and around and like the hair on your head, which stands up. You're not. Positive. Indeed. You're not undead. And judging by the looks in the direction of the sun, you're not a vampire, but. I'm this... half breed. Ah, I see. A damn fear. Yes. I've never seen fear. I've never seen one in real life. She sheathes her blade. I'm sorry. This is a dangerous place. I haven't been in Usala long. Where are my manners? She holds out her right hand. My name is Emirian Bassandra. I'm constantly trying to try to keep my Carbuncle for manifesting. Okay. With my right hand. For when I say Kahan, I will say I am Edgar Xavier. Well, Edgar, you look like you have the basics of defending yourself down. I suppose we could work together. Yes. The fine gentleman in here told me that house over there was the last person to go missing so far best bet is to look for clues there and we have to deter- and I've determined it is a Nosferatu indeed that is well lead the way oh hunter of vampires may the dawn flower bless our investigation she falls out like going around falls in behind you and my so I don't mess up the pronunciation. It's Ragathiel? Yes. Okay. I say, and may Ragathiel bless us as well. You didn't strike me as a much of a caster. Are you? No, you can't be a paladin. My my profession is. Uh, it is closest in the divine order to an inquisitor. Higher members of 
my practice can cast spells similar to Inquisitors, but I am not, and my powers do not come from faith. I see. Oh, okay. It is eternal faith, is what I believe it is, in our cause. What do you mean? I believe our cause and belief in exterminating all undead is what fuels it. A noble cause. Saren Ray seeks the same. The undead are a blight, and it is my job to, well, show them the light of the dawn. You guys, as you're, as you're talking, you're walking, and you reach the house. As you get there, and like you go to like knock on the door, the door opens. Not as if someone has opened it, but like what little effort you're putting into the knock is enough to push the door. It moves perhaps like six inches before you realize the uppermost hinge has been removed and then it kind of like leans back. There's a creaking noise as the other hinge starts straining. I look at the hinge to see if it looked like it was forced open. It looks like someone who knew what they were doing removed it. No foul play here. Well, certainly foul play here. I guess rather no... No one has punched down the door. Yeah. Hmm. I open the door the rest of the way. Okay. So doing that causes the, the wood is a little older than it might appear. And like opening it all the way, the hinge creaks, gives way, and the door falls backwards into the house, which is unoccupied. Um, I start looking for clues. Okay. In and I do have an ability that lets me add my level to tracking and stuff. Nice. Okay. As you start looking around, Emirian draws her sword and holds the the like pommel up to her face to like Thundercats! Ho! That kind of well, that's not Thundercats, that's I am Thunder! Because I know Josh is gonna watch this and call me on it. But up to her face, she says some words in Celestial, you are bathed in holy light as you feel a little more sure of yourself as you begin to look around. There's not really much here. The places where they would store food are empty. The bed has been stripped of its like its sheets, its pillows, things like that. All the Any bigger stuff. Blood stains. No blood stains. All the bigger stuff, like uh the like the bed the things people sit on the table those all remain in the house but it's as if someone just packed up and left in the middle of the night hmm. i believe the nurse for our two here it, he got in somehow by moving the doors and there's been no struggle so He's probably some sort of caster. Maybe mind control magic or something? Since it looks like they just left of their own accord. It's possible. I say I'm relating this to um, the Saren Ray friend. Right. It's possible. The door doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Something mind control could have happened. It looks like whoever was staying here just left. Hmm. He could have a henchman with him or her. Possibly. That would make sense. Well, I'm not sure what else we can get from staying here. Uh, I agree with that statement. Well, maybe we should we should camp out in one of the houses, keeping an eye on the town. How well can you see in night? Well, and she looks at you again as she does. So her eyes are a like brilliant blue, almost white in color. 
they're clearly unnatural. So too is the way her, like, as the wind picks up behind you, her hair is tousled like, and it lands perfectly. My people can see just fine in the dark. We are here to combat it, after all. Indeed. I'm sorry, I, I come from no line of vampire hunters, but the line of angels for which I am descended... Well, we get into the habit of doing what's right. You understand. I understand. Well, if I could fix the door, I would. We'd camp out here. I suppose we could camp in the what passes for the Church of Erasil in this town. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Indeed. She begins making that way as i'm following behind her do you, do you have any more evidence than what i have brought forward i do not it's obvious something's happened here but i don't see anything you're not seeing hmm. if my brother was here he he was always the more vigilant of us I am only thankful that Saren Ray has chose to bestow on me her gifts. Uh. Well, Valrin and I split up a while ago. When we meet up again in Last Wall, I can add this notch to my tally. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have brought that up. I imagine your family story isn't as kind she puts a hand on your shoulder i'm happy to hear any story i always help people get through things and also to help pass things down Indeed. if you would like to talk about it you can if you would not that is also respectable well, i'm glad you understand People like you, I'm I'm sorry. I shouldn't say it that way, forgive me. People who I'm fine with it. The damn fear, then, or I've known a couple of tieflings in my time. Those of us with less than savory heritages, well so often we turn to badness because we are made of badness and it's just refreshing to meet someone like you someone who doesn't feel that way uh there are curses you may say my heritage has given me but i see them as a weapon to use against them fire with fire she nods so when it comes to that just to be clear if I invoke the light of Saren Ray to close your wounds, that will hurt you, correct? Correct. I so the potions of inflict light wounds. I have my healing here. Good. I'm glad you thought ahead. Well, you know all about my family. Tell me about yours. Huh. Well, I guess you don't know all about my family. I. My parents are both. They're like me. They're Azimars. So is my brother. We we come from a long line, you could say. And we've come here to do our part in ridding the land of its evil. We're from Last Wall originally. But I don't think the Whispering Tyrant's going anywhere anytime soon. My services are better used here, where they can help people. Uh. My brother left to escort a, oh, what was his name? A professor. From the professor? Lepidstadt? Yeah. Uh, Lep she, she begins snapping her fingers in her, like, I guess you can't really snap fingers in, like, a gauntlet. So it's more of, like, a metallic clinging noise that repeats over and over. What was his name? Lorimar? Yes, yes, that. Him. Do you know him? Yeah. 
he he found me after he basically put me on this course that I'm on of fighting the undead. How did that happen? He seemed to be a smart enough man from what little I saw of him, but he lacked the conviction. He He's one of those that wants to look into the darkness and isn't afraid of what's going to look back, but seemed ill-prepared to defend against it, if you'd ask me. Well, I met him on a dark time of my life, but what happened was I came back from, I was out in the forest trapping some animals. I'd get money for the inn for my stepmother. Well, adopted mother, whatever you want to call her. My mom. I thought, see, there were a group of adventurers in, and I was out traveling because a lot of them didn't like me. But I came back, almost all of them were dead. There were a few still fighting the creature. I ran upstairs to find her dead, and when I went back downstairs filled with raids, I blacked out, I guess, or something, but the creature was dead. I picked up, I was holding one of their weapons in my hand, one of the adventurers, and I took my mom to a doctor. He took her, the doctor saw me, my fangs were sewing then. And he took her in and came back out, telling me she was dead. After that, I decided to leave that town and I burnt down the inn. Well, a few days after that, I burnt down the inn, leave no trace behind of my past life. And then the professor found me, hearing word of my of me killing the creature, or of me killing them, as some people think in that town, that it was the creature. I think it was a ghoul, I'm not for sure. But he helped show me how to kill them, and then eventually took me to the people who showed me the ways of the vampire hunter, and how to turn their powers against them. I see. That must have been really hard for you. I And she hand back on shoulder. I'm sorry you had to go through that. The uh-huh. Dawnflower teaches that though sometimes we must struggle, all have the light of redemption inside them, and I'm very glad to see that you did not succumb to a similar fate, and I'm sorry if people believe that someone such as yourself might be the type. I can tell. And she smiles at you. Her smile is, like, flawless. Every, and this is saying something in a fantasy setting, every single last one of her teeth is perfectly aligned and just, like, brilliantly white in color. She says something again in Celestial. What is Xavier's alignment? He is, give me a moment to double check. Loading up my character seat. Just because I want to be exact. I think I remember it, but... That's fair. I don't want to give you something, then we have to redcon it. Mm-hmm. Okay, Xavier is... Ray size... Uh, my alignment is neutral good. Neutral good. Okay, same as hers. So there's a couple of, like, a spell hits you. No. I see. I see. You and I are cut from a similar cloth, aren't we? That's interesting. I suppose so. She smiles. As you guys, like, have made your way at this point into that barn, and barn it truly is. There's a couple of cows and a horse all penned in hay everywhere. The outside Erastal's holy symbol hangs over the barn. Inside, 
there's a, a little like not very big probably about the size of like a small bookshelf sized shrine to a rassel as you guys come in and look around a out from inside like a giant bale of hay come a couple of rats they scurry forward and begin sniffing you it's only two rats just two yeah <laughs> I don't think you two are the ones we're looking for Nemirian <laughs> says something in Celestial they are not <laughs> well uh, may I ask what you are saying in Celestial if you don't mind I'm just curious I find the language interesting simple incantations I ask Saren Ray for the power to detect those around me who might not be what they are or feel the true intentions of a humanoid's heart or sometimes fire a burst of sunlight she draws her scimitar directly from this in any case Saren Ray has always been forthcoming now I'm not exactly looking forward to going out and looking in the night for this thing no, it would be at its most powerful. But she nods. Will you I take do the have first a class watch ability. Or... Yeah, I do have a class ability that lets me detect the undead. So I'm going to to take the first watch. Duly noted. And she, there's nothing really here that's going to serve as a bed, but basically just here's a bit of hay that doesn't have anything gross in it. Lays down on it. Yeah. This will do, I suppose. And late afternoon kind of wears on. People have been moving around the village in this time, not really doing a whole lot of much anything. As the sun gets lower and lower in the sky, people begin to like make their way back home. There's not really like a tavern here, so much as like... This guy's house is bigger than everyone else's house. And so that's where they go to do the drinking after work time is over. People are oh. giving the church a pretty wide berth because rumor spreads pretty fast that there are a couple of strangers in town, both of which don't look like normal humanoids. So you definitely see from time to time people like stop, whisper, point in the direction of the church, church, and then move on about their way. Yeah. Other than that, the night passes, well, rather like the late afternoon, I suppose, passes pretty quickly. Your watch ends, you tag up with Amiri, and Amiri takes her. She says a couple of words in Celestial, and the place feels calmer, feels safe. Yeah. And... It's not long before you fall asleep, but when you wake up, Amirian is gone. No, 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 no. Amirian. No response. I'm going to use survival to track her. Okay. So it's pretty obvious where you guys have been in this barn, because, like, there's a lot of stuff on the ground that will take prints. Hers are a little heavier than yours, given that, well, I have to imagine a vampire hunter is rolling around in, like, chain mail, right? Light armor? Um, armored coat. An armored coat, the lightest of all armors. And her in her, like, breastplate with the big gauntlets and the giant sabatons, like, her feet leave real big marks in the ground. It's pretty obvious she did a lot of moving around at night, and it's also pretty obvious she left the barn at one point. At that point, the tracks get a little muddled. Hmm. Um, I'm casting Detect Undead. Okay. The radius on that's probably like 60 feet? It's the standard spell, so yeah. Got you. Nothing yes. pings. Do you ping? No, you you don't ping. You're a humanoid. <laughs> Do I ping to my undead? 
<laughs> well, there's a vamp. There's an undead here, guys. That's a Everyone question. looks at me. I have to look that up because I don't know. T H A M. Damn peace. Okay. I, I don't know if I do detect. You are a. I have a class of that I will de- that I will seem dead to people when you they are a humanoid with the damn fear subtype. You do not detect as undead. All right. There's probably like a faint like in the back of your mind like it doesn't register you, but it kind of registers your semi undead nature, but not enough. Like if there was another damn fear hiding next to you, you wouldn't pick him up. You just pick you up because you happen to be at like the center of the radar. Yeah. Um, I won. I won out there, and, and I yell for her name. Okay. So it's pretty early in the morning. People are kind of just getting up, going about their day. You start shouting, and dogs start barking, and what's he shouting about out there? Don't you know people gotta work for a living? People like glare in other houses at you, but she does not respond. Her, what was her name again? Her, her name right is. Hold up, I will grab it. It is in the Discord. Her name is. I'll just put it in the Discord as well, really quickly. Got to grab it from a special place. Her name is E M Y E R I E N Emirian. I mean. Have any of y'all seen a million? People begin kind of like forming around in like a semicircle at this point around you. Her? What are you? What are you talking about, son? What's he? What's he talking about? The same old man leaning in the direction of a like a the- middle-aged halfling woman. I don't frankly know. What are you talking about, Sonny? The stranger that was in town with me. I assume she went to do some praying or whatever it is her people do. Do you all have a shrine to Saren right here? No, just the shrine you appropriated. Oh no. Did any of y'all see anything last night? They kind of look around at each other. Ah, no. Not me. Not me. Did you? No, not me. No. Saw the backs of my eyelids. Same stew I've been having every night for 25 years, then bed. So there's like a lot of people around me? The whole population of the town, basically, at this point. So in total, including like children and pets, probably like two dozen entities. Did anyone go missing last night? Everyone proceeds to do a quick head count. No, no, we're all here. Are you the here too? Took her. That seems like a bit of a maybe. But why wouldn't she wake me? It must be mind control. Everyone kind of begins talking quietly amongst themselves. Well, Sonny, right, I think you ought to be getting out of here now. Outsiders are attracting more outsiders. Fortunately for us, we've got enough garlic to keep the vampires away. I don't think your problem is just vampires. The house was broken into. Someone knew what they were doing by taking off the hinges. What? What are you talking about? And they... The house there, as I point. And they all suddenly realize that door has been vandalized. Well, that's not very vampiric. That doesn't happen. They don't have to do that. And wait, where's the garlic? We gave that family garlic, right? Yeah, of course we did. Everybody gets garlic around these parts unless you get eaten by a vampire. Which means it was either the vampire has a human working form or something that is humanoid enough to bypass the garlic, or they're trying to frame it as a vampire. Well, you know what I think? What? And at this point, the old man, he's he's been carrying a pitchfork. At this point, he kind of like lowers it at a 15 degree angle. 
in your direction. So not by much, just kind of forward a little. I think Vampire might have sent one of his children in here to fool us. You look the type, but with your pale skin, you ate my garlic without asking, but... I think I know one of them monsters when I see one. Maybe you're just a new vampire. What do you think, everyone? New garlic-resistant vampire? And they all kind of begin, they begin like general nods and mm -mm of approval as several other people draw their farm implements and turn in your direction. I hold, I sell them my holy symbol as I'm backing away. See, it doesn't burn me. Why? Why would a sword and a wing burn you, vampire? Doesn't mean it's nothing. A, it's a holy symbol. Don't recognize that deity. And maybe you're holy then, symbol resistant. What do you think? Then, then put one on me as I'm backing away. Okay. Someone from the back withdraws a holy symbol of... Uh, we'll say Phrasma. A little... A little halfling girl comes up. Just well, here, take this. I'm sure he's not evil. I you hold are... the symbol as I say thank you. Okay. The symbol does not burn. You certainly are able to carry the thing. See, as I offer it back to the girl, she nods. Everyone kind of simmers down a little. If y'all don't want my help, I can understand that. But please don't drive me out like a monster. Yeah, maybe we're, we were maybe a little fast, you know. Who still loves dangerous place? Says clearly the man in charge. Can't be trusting anybody. Maybe they're sending werewolves or, or I, who knows what all else. Yeah, it's around this time that like from out beyond your peripherals, Amirian turns the corner. Amirian. Ah, there you are. I'm so sorry I had to leave. She begins, she can't move that fast in her armor, but as fast as she can, she makes her way through. People see and, like, make a hole for her. I'm, I'm so sorry about last night. I had to leave. I, I thought I saw him when I went outside. It was either chase him or wake you up. You understand, right? Uh, I understand. How far did you get? Not far enough. But Maybe I can pick up the trail from where you left off. Of course, of course. Follow me. And she turns and begins waving you on. The people go about their, their daily routines, such as they are. You follow her. and yeah. Yes? I tell so apparently that think there's new garlic resistant vampires well you know people come up with things all the time out here you don't have a lot of reliable information you just have to well you make assumptions they just uh, want to protect themselves true you guys make your way like farther and farther out As that happens, and you like you well and truly leave the little village behind, she continues on. Just, I suppose, in a way, they're they're not unlike what we stayed the night with, you know, cattle. Ah. Uh, they seek only to protect themselves from an inevitable end, and I can't blame them. I see. Well, hopefully we can s stop them from this in here. At this point, Amirian smiles. And you're pretty far away from the town at large, but this is when you start to hear the screams. Are the screams from the town? Mm-hmm. We need to go back. I oh. think something's attacking them. She's already on the move. Yeah, I, I start going, too. Okay. So by the time you make your way, the village is like out of eyesight because you've turned around a couple of hills and things. But by the time you make your way to where the village is back within line of sight, like cresting a hill, you see it, the whole thing is burning. A couple of like, like the family dog 
that you saw during your interrogation cycle is like fleeing out the town a couple of the horses have got out Amirian moves in front of you without stopping as the pair of you make it into the town proper uh-huh. that same old man who's leaning on his pitchfork because like one of his legs is now obviously very useless as if something had like savaged it from like where butt becomes thigh down something had like stabbed in and like raked his flesh basically all he can do is crawl or like drag the thing using his pitchfork as like an improvised crutch makes his way oh. to gets to a Mirian first just please please my lady you're one of those clerky types right you can you can help me right and before he gets all the words out of his mouth and Mirian draws her scimitar and beheads him why'd you do that a simple act of mercy and as she like goes to put her sword away you see that the the blood on it kind of remains on the sword and the sword has lost as well as like Amirian herself has lost a lot of her a lot of her sheen a lot of her luster her hair is as if she hadn't showered well showered is an arbitrary term as if she hadn't washed her hair in a couple of months it's really greasy and just flat on her head her teeth have become kind of yellowed and her canines have grown a little longer in addition you don't seem yourself i don't do i hmm. unfortunate for you you were to be oh sacrifice perhaps my master would have use for you which Unfortunate. Unfortunately, it's time. And as she like draws her scimitar and levels it at you, there's a her eyes kind of unfocus for a second. She looks up into the sky, nods one. Yes, master. I raise my hand that doesn't have the sword as a my other one's reaching it, and the constant carbuncles manifesting on that hand. Okay. Just to see how he acts, and I'm just since I assume it freaks people out normally yeah she seems unfazed she continues just kind of talking with this guy it's not long before a not so much a figure so much as a form manifests in front of you that being like one way to say it is the area within a oh 20 foot radius or so of where a Miriam was standing decreases in light level so suddenly just like here is a very dark speck in the universe so dark that the daylight's not piercing through it my lord i cast detect i'm dead it pings okay it pings twice rather it pings specifically like in the aura center and like real quick it pings in mirian as well there's a do you speak Necril? Yes, I do. So there's in Necril the voice that is aged and ragged. Just, well, my dear, we should return to Caliphus now. We have what we need from here, and I imagine your cohort won't be long before they arrive. Yes, master. Mm. Who are you? They teleport away leaving you by yourself outside the ruins of this poor little town. No. Uh, Amelia, I will help you. I will find a way to undo the curse he has placed upon you. And I shall take vengeance in the name of of Agathiel to stop to slay the man who done this to you. You shout this into the sky and nothing responds. I I go to the town to help the to see if I can help anybody. Okay. Get out. So you go back and basically all you can do is stop the fires at this point. 
upon first glance, everyone who's here has been just like brutally murdered. This is not normally the work of a vampire. Normally it's take what you need to survive. No, this was an act of brutal savagery. I am giving them a proper funeral. Okay. That's wise, given that best case scenario, you get a couple of zombies out of this, because, like, Ustalov is a land that is tainted by the powers of the Whispering Tyrant, and so the unquiet dead are all too common. Worst case scenario, this place becomes haunted. So the plan here is basically to pile the bodies on a pyre that being again the proper funeral as you do so out from behind the barn comes a little oh there was a family of halflings their son who is small even for a halfling poor thing must be like a preteen in his years comes up and says, mister yes my my mom's in trouble can you help he's obviously really like the shock of what has gone down has shut off his emotions. He's too young to process anything that's happened here. I'll help with what I can. Okay, follow me, please. And tugs on your like your armored coat and begins walking out behind the barn. You guys head back there. And his mother has been impaled into the back of the barn by a, like... It appears to be made of one piece of some kind of solid black metal. A bastard sword has run her through. I cut in half? Or, oh, what you mean? Like she is stuck to the barn and the bastard oh. sword is holding her like by the shoulder into the barn. It's the hilt of the thing goes backwards, almost as if to have like a couple of fangs coming off it and from what you can see of the blade it appears to be serrated there are a bunch of little tiny triangle shaped spikes coming off the side the hilt at the very like the very bottom of the pommel sits a oh it's probably oh about the color of like the rising sun which is ironic just like a bright yellow eye it turns and regards you as like you and the kid turn the corner the kid is scared beyond words at this point the eye on the sword turns and looks at me like as in it can rotate 360 degrees inside the hilt and it turns to regard you Would I know if that's a sentient weapon, probably? Stands to reason. It's definitely very magical. The halfling woman is still very much alive. She's panting and, like, trying to push back against the barn to, like, push her, obviously in vain, push herself that, up the length of the sword and off. Uh, it's not that, working. That, that, that'll make it worse. Let me help you. She nods, says nothing. I I look at the sword and I, I saw examine you later as I just grab the hilt of it to pull it out and I'm using my vampiric strength ability. Okay, what does that if do? If I need to. It increases my strength by two, which would make my strength score when this is activated a total of a 20. Okay, fair enough. So you grab onto this thing and the power of undeath surges into you and as you grab it, there's a moment of, there's an expression in other parts of Galarian that one should never grab a tiger by the tail. That expression, you feel what that expression must mean in your chest as this thing resonates into you. And it's if you've just messed with powers far beyond your ken and they're like half a step away from just tearing you apart shortly after that. As the blade comes out of the woman who collapses, she'll probably, like, assuming she doesn't rapidly bleed out, she probably will walk away from it. Am I still conscious after pulling out the sword then? You are still conscious as 
The next question I have for you, I suppose, is do you have anything to stop the halfling woman from bleeding out? My plan was to get to rip off parts of my regular set and use it as a makeshift tunic or not whatever that's called when you wrap it to stop stop bleeding. Okay. Do you have ranks in heal? Not that I'm asking for a roll, but does Edgar know how to do this? Edgar does know how to heal. I have one rank in it. Good enough. Okay, so you're able to like quickly holding the sword run up and stop the woman's bleeding. It's it's rough. She's gonna have a real big scar, but she's gonna survive. And it's around this point that like as you are rapidly working on this woman, you realize that you have you're doing this one handed and you haven't let go of the sword and for the first time in a really long time, nothing hurts. Your hands remain very arthritic and like claw-esque. The nails are way too long. But you're able to open and close it all the way without things hurting. The woman thanks you and nods and goes to her son. And it's around this time in your mind's ear. Master, are you feeling well? Your blood feels thin. Do you need to feed? Have you fed today? Is this my hand's voice? This is a voice in your mind's ear that you don't recognize. I say, I whisper, hello? Hello, master. Are you the sword? I am what you created, master. Are you, you must be faint, please, allow me. And getting a further inspection of his blade as it talks, because it kind of forces itself, you realize without you trying to do it, you kind of like snap up to attention as if like to, once again, to I of Fundara to bring your sword up. The blade is almost like an S-talk. It's very triangular in shape. It was a very difficult wound to close on that poor halfling woman. And at the top of it, each end of the triangle has a couple of blades running at like a 45 degree angle down almost like the sword is a hook that I plus the you. plus the points running down all of it like you realize that the sword is capable of absorbing blood there's almost like a bunch of little like needles on this thing and when it stabs in or slashes it drinks from its victim the biggest one at the top begins like a fountain basically kicks on and a little bit of blood runs out as the sword without your consent, turns to pour this blood into your mouth. A couple seconds later, it ceases. And... There you are, Master. I'm sure you will be fit and ready to go now, yes? Yes. Do I have to talk to you out loud, or could you hear me in my mind? Master, you created me. You know the answer to that question. You can do either. Strange how your blood still feels so thin. Nevertheless, it must be you. You created me to serve only the Archminos family. You don't have any children that I don't happen to know about. No. Ah, good. Um, did the, is that halfling still there? Yes, they're both still there. You all should get to the nearest big town. What was it? Was um, con con Caliphus. Caliphus. The vampires are heading to Caliphus. Go anywhere but there. As I hand them twenty five gold out of my own pocket. That's a lot of money for them. That's more money than they've ever seen in their whole lives. They both nod, head off in get that direction. A new life. <laughs> yes, yes, and they they take off. I Look. created you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was I... that was awful kind of you master why are you feeding the cattle the cattle hmm are you referring to the two halflings no master I'm referring to the cattle we feed upon Who is this family line you speak of again? 
Master, you're beginning to worry me. And as it says that, you feel that sensation of like a wild animal beginning to turn on you and start growling. I am told there are powerful enough spellcasters to forge a relationship, to use an item such as myself. You are, in fact, part of the Archminos bloodline, yes? If I am, I did not... That did not tell me. I don't know my real parents, but if you can sense that I am, then I must be. <laughs> Master likes to say funny things. Of course he is. If he wasn't, <laughs> I would kill him. Uh, Wait. That's probably my dad. I, <laughs> Indeed, Master. I sense there's someone else here, isn't there? Yes. And so Inside my hand, yes. How strange, Master. You let me go for perhaps five minutes, and in this time, someone else has decided to call you host. I see... I see all of us as... There's more power in numbers. <laughs> Master, you know my powers can't manifest all the way if there's someone else using your body. One moment, please. And without your consent, again, the hand turns a 90 degree angle as you like. It's really difficult for you to spread your, I guess you kind of can't because bastard swords are not small. So rather you, the pommel of the blade where the eye is sets down on top of your carbuncle and you begin to push. The pain is unbearable, but it lasts Can away. I force the sword away? You try. But try as you might, you you can feel that this thing has exerted its power over you. It pushes into the carbuncle. The carbuncle screams out as down the blade goes. It's not long no. before the carbuncle's face has like, and they're already pretty melty. But as the blade goes down into your hand, pommel first, into your arm, down almost like through your chest to run out the other end you can feel this thing burn and the carbuncle's face has been replaced with a smiling mouth full of black teeth and now as the thing talks you can see it move as it's like whoop, put its hand your hand directly in front of your face there master see now is the carbuncle dead out again do what did is it dead type of a thing is what happened or is it moving on the ground you feel more like the carbuncle has been consumed replaced altered you feel like it where it was in your body but it has been like it feels heavier hmm. now you can use my powers as you have made them master call for me I call. And the sword appears in your hand. Like, the teeth of the mouth turn 90 degrees out to, like, become the blade as in a matter of a couple seconds it lands in your hand. It is excruciatingly painful. But whilst you hold the blade, the pain of your advanced age is a pain you do not feel. Mm -hmm. A couple seconds later, the blade goes back to form its, for lack of a better word, carbuncle form. Now I can hide within you, monster. I see. It's around this time that, oh, a couple of well-armored individuals on horseback make their way up the road. They, one of them has Eomedes' holy symbol on his shield and like his sigildry and the banner from his lance. The other one, sits astride the horse with like a staff leaning like almost all the way to the ground where he could touch it from horseback you you there what happened here nosferatu happened a a cleric or paladin i only knew her for a short time of saran ray was turned into a some sort of spawn or mind control or actually turned into one but they they left. They said they got what they needed, and they're going to Caliphus. Oh, I see. 
Well, you were lucky to have survived, my friend, as this is happening inside your mind's ear. And you can, that hand instinctively closes, but you can feel the mouth moving as you hear in your mind's ear. Just, Master, kill them. Master, we should I'm kill outnumbered. them. I'm outnumbered. We no. play it smart. Yes, Master, of course. Forgive me. Only kill if needed. If we can do this without killing, even better. We can feed another day. Master, you're so nice. When did this happen, Master? I don't I don't understand. But as like he kinda like trails off in your minds, you're the individuals with you that have ridden up. Well, Caliphus is a big city. Surely they can't control the whole thing. I we can take you there, or if there's somewhere else you'd rather go, we can give you escort. Where's the professor live again? On the other side of the country. Um, Matter of I fact, that's probably information you don't, strictly speaking, know. You know he teaches at a school in Lepidstadt, which is... Uh, let me actually... Do I know that he's passed already? You do not. Okay. So far as you know, he's alive and well. All right. Hmm. How how many soldiers are there? Just two. Uh, I would love for your escort, but there is two halflings that were just attacked. One barely survived his mom, and I think they would be needing your all's help. I don't know if they can actually defend themselves. Indeed. Which way did they go? I point. And they take off at a gallop. This village lays now in ruin. What is Xavier's next move? Hmm. But refresh my memory on what all you do. I have been forgetful lately after our separation. I of hope I hope my memories return in full soon, now that you are together again. I hope they do as well, Master. You're a very powerful wizard. I should hate if something had happened to your poor brain. You created me to serve as your bonded weapon. You took the souls of mortals and corrupted them and gave me a semblance of intelligence and gave me a semblance of intelligence that I might think for my own. Hmm. I can live within you. I can live on the outside. I may simply serve you, Master. Uh, I, I see. Hmm. So, if my theory is correct, bonded weapons can be passed down throughout family lines, correct? I suppose. If the blood is similar enough? I suppose. Hmm. Given that you have no, that we are aware of, children of your own master, and that you wish to use me as an instrument to gain power, I should... I should like to think that you would not part from me. I suppose if you found a better prize, you might forget I existed. I am uh, rather jealous of your spell book, but... <laughs> Let's say I am taking a more martial approach to life nowadays, but spells will still be used. It's just more suiting to see people face to face. Of course, Master. I'm more than happy to slay your enemies for you. Hmm. I am an agent of the Archminos line. And how old is the line? It's old, Master. Hmm. I see. I start um heading the cal calabas. Okay. Do we noted? So mechanically speaking, 
as you move on and you lose track of the Nosferatu a lot of time, probably about oh three or four months pass as you take your time in seclusion to pick up what information you can learn more about this thing that is basically has moved in without your consent mechanically speaking it functions as a countenanced carbuncle and receives all of the benefits that it is capable of benefiting from save for the fact that also it is a masterwork bastard sword awesome that can it's still the same amount of actions to draw or sheath it but the process of doing so causes it to go inside your arm appearing as the carbuncle and then it comes out as a sword with an eye on it though of course you retain your like while it's drawn you still have the plus one insight bonus on attack and damage rolls uh the, oh. all the like disabled device buffs and stuff in any case a few months passed you you learn and also this thing functions mechanically as a it is at first level it you can feel it's as time passes, its level of intelligence drops pretty rapidly. After only a couple weeks, I gotta get the exact number here, because you're also gonna need the link, which I'll shoot at you after this. Its intelligence, its ability to speak and reason drop pretty drastically. It's still like, smarter than the average bear but it loses a lot of its ability to communicate and sometimes passing through the street there's a beggar who's like sick and sad on the streets and there's that in the back of your head just master kill them eat them and there are occasions where the blade wants to manifest itself out but a week or so after that urge becomes much and much easier for you to resist as mechanically this thing functions as a black blade both in color and in the fact that it is an intelligent item a few months later wow. you've been staying at a little inn in caliphus kind of off the beaten path hoping that no one runs into you while you get your bearings and process all of this and from time to time help with a zombie problem a letter reaches your room, informing you that an old friend of yours, Petrus Lorimore, has met with an unfortunate accident and has died. Oh. Let me no. Have, I should actually get the actual... I'm clicking so much all over my recording. I believe the letter... That's the interactive map. That's not what I wanted. I'm ruining my stream because I can't find it. Where is it? Not the carrying crown folder. The other carrying crown folder. Watch me just not have this book. There it is. Okay. I am about 90% sure this book contains the actual letter of what happened. Or not what happened, but the letter you receive to make sure I get the information right. So like next week when I'm doing Emmys, I don't give her like the wrong, <laughs> you're actually going here, sorry, oopsie. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. Okay, almost there, should be. Okay. The letter comes from, you didn't know the professor had a daughter, but it's been written by someone by the name of Kendra Lorimore. It, it informs you that you've been left in Petrus's will and it invites you to attend the funeral. It's a long ways from Caliphus to the, the town of Ravengro where the funeral will be held, but if you were to leave today, you would get there basically just in time and that is where we're going to end it. Having a bunch of evil, evil races is fun, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of flavor I don't get to use often, and that's why I'm really stoked for Carrying Crown. In any case, if you're watching on Twitch, we got one more tonight. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll have one more tomorrow. For now, that's all the time we have. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, ding the bell for more sweet Pathfinder stuff. Say bye, Chewie. Bye.